Hello and welcome to the Unit 9 podcast on Section 19.1. Today we're going to be talking about uh, acids and bases. I'm Mr. Sakaguchi. I am Mr. Lin. And here we go. So acid and bases are kind of op opposites to each other. And here are some of their properties. Acids, they tend to taste sour. Um, they turn litmus paper red. They react with some metals to produce hydrogen gas. They conduct electricity. And um, in particular, carbonic acid, we've talked about this before in uh, last semester, where carbonic acid, which is H2CO3, is unstable and it will immediately break down into water and carbon dioxide gas. Uh, whereas bases taste bitter, um, you're usually associated with soap, so they feel slippery, they turn litmus paper blue, and they also conduct electricity. By the way, you should not go around tasting things to see if they're acids or bases. Do not lick batteries. Just saying. Okay. Uh, ions and solutions. Um, all water uh, basically contain a small amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. And if we're looking at something and determining whether or not is it is an acid or a base, what we look at is the concentration of hydrogen and hydroxide ions in solution. And if the solution is neutral, you're going to have an equal amount of hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Um, just so that we're not confused, the OH minus ion, that's our hydroxide, and uh, we'll refer to it as such. Um, and then for acidic solutions, we're going to have more hydrogen uh, ions than hydroxide ions. And then for basic, it's the exact opposite. There are more hydroxide ions than hydrogen ions in concentration. Sometimes they're called alkaline solutions as well. Um, you may see water's equilibrium expression one of two ways. Some books will have two water molecules combining to form a hydroxide ion and a, what we call a hydronium ion. Or you can see, or it could be represented by this equation at the bottom where water is forming hydrogen and hydroxide. Hydronium and H plus are basically equivalent. It depend, really depends upon the book and the, and the, the field of chemistry that, that it refers to. Right. Now, there are different ways to identify uh, something as an acid or a base. The first um, definitions of acids and bases were developed by a fellow by the name of Arrhenius. Uh, Arrhenius acids are basically substances that contain hydrogen and ionize and produce hydronized directly by, by dissolving in, the, in water. Arrhenius bases all, uh, are similar in that they directly produce hydroxide ions when they're dissolved in water. So notice that Arrhenius acids and bases directly have either hydrogen or hydroxide ions in their, in their uh, formulas. Now, this worked to a certain degree, but what they notice is that some things could act as an acid or a base without necessarily having hydrogen or hydroxide ions. So a, a different definition was necessary. And this was bro uh, developed by two guys kind of in conjunction, Bronsted and Lowry. And so there's also a Bronsted-Lowry definition for acids and bases that's a little bit more generalized. Bronsted-Lowry acids are proton donors, <coughs> and Bronsted-Lowry bases are proton acceptors. Now, as a result of uh, a Bronsted-Lowry acid donating or giving up a proton, the leftovers um, can be called a conjugate base. Um, same thing for a Bronsted-Lowry base if it gives, uh, if it accepts a proton, it winds up becoming or forming a conjugate acid. So the process of donating or accepting a proton gives rise to what's called the conjugate or the result of um, donating or accepting protons. Right. And so what we can do is we can look on, we can look at something before and after proton donation and exception and we can create acid-base pairs. Um, what we find is that Bronsted-Lowry bases are always paired with conjugate acids. So in other words, after the base accepts a proton, the product on the other side will be an acid, and Bronsted-Lowry acids, after they've donated their proton, is the conjugate, the, the conjugate base will be the product. Also remember that protons and hydrogen ions are basically the same thing. Right. We can more visually accept, uh, kind of show this with um, chemical reactions. So here I have two examples. So here we have, what is this, uh, nitrous, nitrous acid, nitrous. and it's, it's reacting with water, and what ends up happening is 
Notice how the difference between HNO2 and NO2- minus is the loss or removal of a hydrogen ion or a proton. And the difference between H2O and hydronium is the addition of a hydrogen ion. So this is our Bronson-Lowry acid. This is our Bronson-Lowry base, conjugate base, conjugate acid. And these are our two conjugate pairs. Now notice that the, acid, the bronsillary acid becomes a conjugate base. The bronsillary base becomes a conjugate acid. Also shown here um, with the ammonia, after, you, after it gains hydrogen, it becomes protonated and it forms a conjugate acid. And then our water, in this, in this case, loses a proton and becomes a conjugate base with a hydroxide ion. Now, this is a little kind of crazy um, because most of the time when we, when we put things in water, the water is basically just separating ions and stuff. It's not really participating in the reaction. What makes acid-base chemistry a little different is that the water that these things are dissolved in will occasionally per per participate in the reaction. Right. Okay. Um, some effects of, of uh, Bronsillary acids and bases. Some substances are amphoteric, and these are substances that can act as an acid or a base, depending upon the circumstance. Sometimes it's also referred to as amphiprotic. Sa same idea, though. Yeah, and it, the one that's always going to be the universal amphoteric or amphiprotic will be water. Right. Um, Basically, if we, you know, Arrhenius model, and the Arrhenius and the Bronsillary models are basically ways to kind of classify the same things. So what we find is that Arrhenius acids and bases are basically going to be the same under the Bronsillary model. So what I mean by that is Arrhenius acids will be Bronsillary acids, and Arrhenius bases will be Bronsillary bases. But due to the fact that the Arrhenius model is kind of limited to just uh, hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, it's not, and it doesn't cover all of the, uh, all the categorizations for acids and bases. Bronsted-Lowry encompasses all of it, so you are going to see Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases that are that would not classically be defined as an Arrhenius acid or base. Okay, we also have um, acids that are capable of donating multiple hydrogen ions. Um, if, if we have an acid that can only donate one, this is what we call a monoprotic acid. So if, notice all these acids that I listed here all have one hydrogen ion to donate. This is an organic acid, and this is the H that would be donated for this one. We'll talk more about organic acids later in the year. Now, it's also possible for an acid to donate two, maybe even three, um, protons when it dissociates in water. So an example would be H2SO4. It's got that subscript of a 2 there, so you know that this will give off two hydrogen ions, uh, as, as well as H2CO3. We'll also do the same thing, triprotic acids, same idea. And you'll be able, be able to identify what kind of acid it is by what the subscript is next to the hydrogen of the acid. We also have anhydrides. And anhydrides are basically oxides that can become acidic or basic when, they're, when you add them to water. Um, oxides of nonmetallic elements will produce acids with, when, they, when you put them in water. So, for instance, carbon dioxide in water will make carbonic acid. Whereas oxides of metallic elements will, will form basic uh, solutions. So, for instance, calcium oxide here with water will form, this is our classic uh, Arrhenius acid with formation of hydroxide ions. Yeah, what ends up happening is you get the formation of calcium uh, hydroxide, but then it immediately dissociates because it's um, ionic. I meant to say Arrhenius base, sorry. Okay. And that's it. Mm -hmm.